Hello and welcome to the University of Law. In today's video we are reviewing um, Gallifrey War Room Volume 1 Allegiance. So yeah this came out um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I listened to it, well I've listened to it three times already on the Big Finish app. Uh, finally arrived in the post yesterday so we're going to do a review of the product physically first and then I'll delve into my thoughts on the actual audio contents. So to start with we've got our package, we've got our front cover and we've got some lovely new designs for the Daleks. I will be going over them in a separate law video because the the chap who rendered these Daleks, I've forgotten his name, but he's got his own Twitter account and, and I will do a proper video looking into the law because he released some lovely, lovely detailed fact files on the design of these Daleks and why they're designed that way. So I will be crediting him and going through that in a separate law video in the next few weeks. So what have we got on the front cover otherwise? Well, we've got this lovely sort of um, graphic reference to um, the the War Room from Day of the Doctor, the sort of holographic um, war maps. We've got sort of the vortex at the back here. We've got, it looks like Gallifrey at the back as well. Uh, we have got um, the character of Narvin right here at the back who makes a welcome a reappearance after his sort of apparent, I thought he'd died at the end of the last box set, so he's back. We've got Alistra, played by Carolyn Pickles. Now, um, she originally played um, the incarnation of Alistra, who featured in the Doom Coalition saga with the Eighth Doctor. She did regenerate into the Jacqueline Pierce Alistra, who is the Alistra of this particular time period, which I believe is the early War Doctor period. So this is sort of contemporary, I believe, with the um, War Doctor Begins. Um from sort of references in this and previous box sets um so it should be Jacqueline Pierce as a listener unfortunately she sadly passed away recently so um her previous incarnation um has returned as a matrix projection so that the character can feature and continue to have a place in the war room uh we've obviously got uh, Rasmus um in his the second incarnation we've experienced a big finish um the previous incarnation was in the sort of earlier Eighth Doctor and some of the Seventh Doctor stories, and in the middle of the Eighth Doctor era, we can't well Eighth Doctor Time War era. We saw this new body, so this is obviously set post the Eighth Doctor Time War stories. Uh, we've got Rasslon, as played by Richard Armitage, which is his second form in the Time War. Uh, we've got uh, Vecklin, who obviously originally featured in the sort of War Doctor range and is now, we're now expanding on that character. She's been in many of the Time War stories, usually serving under Alistra. And obviously we've got Alila here, um, who's, other than that, well, the only main character from previous um, Gallifrey box sets who's leading this set. And of course, we've got Ken Bones as the general. Now, the general um, is the only character, I believe, to have met every incarnation of the Doctor on screen because of, well, up to Peter Capaldi, because in Day of the Doctor, he saw all of them by hologram, and then obviously um, met the Twelfth Doctor uh, when he regenerated. Um, for me, he was one of the standout performances of Day of the Doctor. I love this character, and I'm so glad that he's now done several audio dramas. He's done one with um, the Eighth Doctor, as played by Paul McGann, and he's done one with um, the War Doctor in the early War Doctor, War Doctor Begins box sets. So this is called Allegiance. For a bit of context, um, Gallifrey was a spin-off that ran for many years, looking at the political intrigue, intrigue I should say, of um, uh, the Doctor's home world, featuring Romana, Leela, and later characters like Ace as well. There were some original characters, such as Narvin, um, and even Conan Baker returned to um, portray Maxil, to reprise the role of Maxil at one point as well. Um Eventually, there was a full box set series called um, Gallifrey Time War. And what was great about that was it kind of gave us the origins of the war. The first box set started just before on the very eve of war and kind of went through Gallifrey's transition into the Time War. The second box set talked about the rise of Rassilon. And the third and fourth were uh, showed our main characters, our heroes, Romana, Narvin, Leela in exile um, on the run in the middle of the time when eventually their past caught up with them in an epic finale with Rasslon as played by Richard Armitage and this picks up shortly after um, the last box set led spoiler alert um, for this release and previous releases um, the box set ended with Narvin apparently seemingly to have died and Romana um, 
being sent to be the um, curator of the Gallifrey Museum, um, as was experienced in the Doctor Who experience um, live show adventure. Um, so it really tied in really nicely with that. Um, so it was only Leela left and Rosslyn has plans for Leela. Now we know how her story ends because she features in the War Doctor story set about 400 years later from the Doctor's perspective within the narrative of the Time War. And um, by that stage we know that she um, exited the war when she was fired on by an experimental Dalek that displaced her through time. So we know that's going to happen, but at this stage she's working for the War Room. Now I'd have loved you know, another four volumes of um, Gadafrey Time War. However, what they've done is really original. They've finished that phase of the war and they've now jumped forward. So we're now in the heart of the war. Um, whereas that was the early days, we're now very much in the sort of heart of the fight. Rasslon's kind of gone off. And although he's in the first story, he doesn't really feature afterwards, simply because this is very much about um, how he's off doing his own um, plans, which we know from the end of time involve him wanted the Time Lords to ascend their corporal form and destroy the universe um, and just have them as creatures of pure consciousness. Um, and while he's content to do that, he's happy for these guys to run the shop for him. And it's the war room. The war room that we see featured in Day of the Doctor. So what's really great was whereas before it was kind of looking at sort of Gallifrey in general, we're now focusing on the war room. We're focusing on the war. And um, yeah, and it's, it's an absolutely wonderful and box set. So I'll go through the stories in a minute, but first let's get this open. So I always find it a little bit tricky to start with. Let's give this a go. Give it a squeeze. There we go. You'd have thought with the amount that I buy I'd um, be better at these. So on the back we've got a little blurb. We've got a little Gallifrey War Room logo at the top. And here we've got the box set itself. Pop that there. So I get it open with the same artwork, front and back, with the usual copyright for the various characters who've been used. We've got our first story, The Last Days of Frame, by Lou Morgan. Um, do you know I'll go a story at a time as I go through this packaging. And we've got obviously um, the previous, the first two volumes of Gallifrey Time War advertised there. So this story, interestingly, from the bonus features, we learned from Lou Morgan that uh, this was written hot off um, writing the final story of the last box set, the um, Gallifrey Time War for finale, um, because Richard Armitage, um, they recorded it all sort of in one big block. So it's very much, um, she re remained in that world while she was writing it. What's wonderful about this story is it's a wonderful use of Rassilon. He's not overused, but he's there enough that you feel fulfilled that he's a part of the story. It's a great start to the set, it's a great start to the sort of story that we're telling here over these next sort of 16 episodes, which is what it's going to be, 16 episodes. And um, there's a really lovely kind of showing the distinction between Leela and the other Time Lords. It also um, shows characters like the General start to warm towards Leela, so the General goes on a journey. I think there's always that kind of, even in Day of the Doctor, but especially in his second appearance with Rassilon in the the 12th Doctor Hellbent, Heaven Sent um, story, you do kind of get that idea of, although he's being a general and, and he's fighting, deep down there is a sort of someone whose heart's in the right place there. And we do kind of see that as he starts to realise the kind of person the leader is because they're sent on a mission and um, it has the usual timey-wimey element to it, being a time war story. They have to kind of go back and stop a race um, they have to ensure that a planet is destroyed to make sure that the Daleks don't ally with it in years to come. And um, she has a really novel way of um, ensuring that everyone wins. And um, she has a collar on that um, is basically used to torture her if she strays from the mission objective. And the general does use it, it is used on her, and yet she, she's so headstrong that um, she... Um, she works through the pain despite the pain she works through the pain um, to do what she feels is right and you can definitely see that shift in the general feeling respect for her. in that respect we kind of see go through these box sets um, so obviously we've got in here the credits we've got a little um, breakdown of the stories and we've also got some lovely photographs of the cast and crew including Ken Bones there as the general and um, Narvin there at the top as well as played by Sean Carlson. Uh, then we've got the middle two stories. So disc two. 
we have got The Passenger by David Llewellyn. That's a really nice story, actually. Um, it's all about how... Um, I know there's been stories, it's been referenced before, both in television and audio stories, about how the Time Lords, um, you know, their soldiers are very much, um, there's that whole sort of great war feel to it, the soldiers are very much cannon fodder, and um, we know in the past that they've actually resurrected soldiers to just be killed over and over and over again, that was a Ross D. Davis concept from End of Time, and that kind of talks about how, you know, how far can you push soldiers, how much, how far can you use people before they start to um, fight back. And, um, yeah, I, 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 you know, when you fight these wars, at what cost? You know, at what point do you become the enemy you're fighting? At what point do you create enemies with your own people? And that's a lovely story. And across these, and we've got Collateral Victim by Alfie Shaw, and across these two stories, really, story three, uh, two and three, we really kind of continue to see that dynamic between Lena and the other members. We see sort of that respect grow but at the same time she despite the fact that she knows that Rasmus appreciates the doctor and um has a history with the doctor she she does not recognize the doctor's influence in him and his, his behavior and there very much is that um relationship sours um especially in this story um to a point that in the last box that we kind of last story I should say we see how that reflects on um her relationship with the general the general does make a point of, um, whereas other time lords might stab him in the back, Leela is the only one who would actually use a knife, and he appreciates that. He appreciates the fact that, you know, she doesn't play games. What you see is what you get with Leela, and there's kind of that recognition there. So you really kind of see by the end of this box set, the characters have really found themselves, and also found their, themselves in relationship with the other characters. So we're seeing this sort of war room, and the new political dynamic play with those characters for years we saw it with characters like Romana and Narvin and Leela and Ace now we're seeing though that political intrigue with this within this war room and it's another wonderful story um it's similar to the first one in terms of they have a mission to go on um and um we, what we and Leela obviously again takes things in her own direction she does what she feels is right and we we have a good sort of battle scene with the general involved um we again see the um, the fact that Romana is is loved not only on Gallifrey but also her style of leadership and the old Gallifrey is is loved across the galaxy and the universe, um, and the Gallifrey that we're now seeing is this sort of evil Gallifrey that is referenced in Night of the Doctor when Cass would rather die than be saved by a Time Lord. So we're seeing how perception of the Time Lords has changed and how they much preferred leadership under rulers like Romana who are much more inclusive. Um, to a point that this um, story also sees the birth of a rebellion. It's it's it feels very much like things we're going to. I reckon we're going to see in Andor the Star Wars story on uh, Disney Plus soon. In terms of Narvin is sort of this fallen Gallifreyan who's um, picking up those who've been left behind by the war and is now starting an underground rebellion. So um, I think we're going to see that grow. And I think certainly it's sort of setting the seeds for what the next three box that's going to be about. I think we're going to see more of this rebellion. We're going to see more of this intrigue in the court, the courts of Gallifrey, especially in the war room, and more of Rassilon's plans. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how this plays out. And of course, we've got an advert here for Gallifrey, Time War, Volume 3 and 4. So, yeah, um, wonderful set. Well done to everyone involved. Um, obviously, I know we've got a new producer in this range as well. So, um, well done to all directors, producers, um, sound designers, everyone involved. So, really impressive, enjoyable box set. I definitely recommend. You can jump into this box set without listening to any of the Gallifrey previously released. I definitely recommend all of it, um, especially obviously the previous Time War box sets. But I recommend all of it. But if you just want to dive in, this is a perfect jumping on point. So, Gallifrey War Room Allegiance is the first of four volumes. And as I say, it's a wonderful box set, 10 out of 10. And um, I just can't wait to see where it goes. We're certainly seeing the seeds being sown. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the ride. Um, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video and speak soon.